Hello, welcome to our presentation, Understanding the Access Remittance Advice. This presentation will cover the Electronic Remittance Advice, or ERA, which is an electronic version of a payment advice. The ERA provides explanations regarding how the claim is reimbursed by the payer. A paper copy is called the Remittance Advice, or RA. The ERA will detail the paid amount, identify excluded or non-covered charges, and to be able to quickly identify the denial reasons. Many payers may use standard ERAs with similar denial codes. However, many payers will also create their own format for the ERA or remittance advice. Understanding the information presented on your remit will help to improve your daily operations, identify claims that may require additional action, resolve disputed claims, and postings of payments. So let's get started. These materials are designed for fee-for-service programs, including American Indian Health Program, Tribal Regional Behavioral Health Authority, and Tribal Arizona Long-Term Care Services. The basics of a remittance advice is to include the 835 transaction is to communicate to claim submitters the reasons why bill services are paid or denied. Both the current paper remit used by ACCESS and the electronic 835 transaction have many adjudication code values and messages that serve this purpose. The ACCESS remittance advice will show the payer's claim reference numbers or CRN, EFT or check number, service codes, description of services, denial reason codes, and remark explanations. At the end of each financial cycle, the Division of Business Finance will issue a remittance advice. The advice or notice of payment will be sent to each provider that had a claim adjudicate during the current week's financial cycle. The remittance advice is separated into individual reports based on the status of the claim. Each report provides details for claims that are approved, denied, hold, void, unadjudicated, including secondary payer claims for example, Medicare or other insurance. Electronic data transaction information. These are simply reports that can provide you with data based upon your request type electronically. We have the 837I, which is for institutional claims, the 837P for professional services, and the 837D for dental claims. The reports will be able to submit to you information in regards to the transactions that you submitted to access or to the payer. The 835 electronic remittance device provides detailed payment information for professional and institutional claims, as well as dental claims. The 834 transaction is for enrollment and disenrollment. This will transmit enrollment information from the sponsor of the insurance coverage to a healthcare payer on a daily and monthly basis. The A20 EDI, Capitation Payment Transaction, is a weekly file that provides each access health plan with an electronic remittance device for its capitation payments. The 276 and 277 reports are for claim status requests and responses, and this is to the access fee for service uh, for claims that were submitted directly to Access Administration and will exclude Pharmacy Benefit Manager claim status. The 270 and 271 for eligibility request and response is a verification of eligibility coverage and benefit inquiry. The 278 is for referral authorization request and response and is used to check the status of a prior authorization request. The Access Information Services Division EDI Customer Support is the first point of contact for questions related to electronic transactions or to request transaction setup which is the preferred method of contact is by email. If you are providing PHI data in your email, please make sure your email is secure. We've also provided the email address, which is EDI customer support at azaccess.gov. So requesting your 835 setup. Access considers the provider our trading partner and a request for electronic remittance device, the ERA or 835 transaction setup, must come from an authorized individual from within the provider's organization. It cannot be initiated by the provider's clearinghouse, software vendor, or billing service. 
The authorized individual must be someone from within the provider's own organization that has the authority to accept the electronic trading partner agreement executed from the community manager web portal. Only the provider can accept the A as it is again a contractual agreement between the provider and access. The provider's community manager account activation cannot be done by the provider's clearinghouse, software vendor, or billing service. Now, setting up your ERA account, you will need to include your customer name, provider name, customer email address, access six-digit provider ID, or MPI. So who will be able to retrieve the, e the ERA's A35s? The practice or a clearinghouse on behalf of the healthcare provider. If a clearinghouse is to be used, include the name of the clearinghouse in your request. So what are some of the benefits of receiving an electronic remittance advice? Fast and accurate way to post payment details, adjustments and denials. More detailed payment information for each claim and service line. You will be able to view and print information for a single claim and the summary page. You will have the ability to share files and reports and also to export that data and of course a reduction in lag time. So what information will you find on your A35 remit? The remittance advice will detail how the claim was processed by the payer and will include payer paid amounts, denied claims, claims that are in a void status, claim adjustments, and claims in process. The RA will help you to identify any additional action that may be required to resolve the claim. The purpose is to provide detailed payment information relative to the claim and if applicable to describe why the total original charges have not been paid in full. Now let's go over the remittance advice. The information that you can find on your remittance advice will include the total number of claims in the file, your payment amount, check EFT number, your payee and provider information, control numbers, payments or penalty adjustments, total provider payment, and provider identification numbers. We've also listed some of the additional fields that you can view on the remittance advice. We will have your patient name, claim reference number, claim status, patient control number, score date, dates of service, build amount, build units, allowed units, reason codes, also the allowed amount, previously paid amounts, net paid amount, service codes that are applied by the CPT or HIPPIX code, modifiers, number of claims, total build amount, and of course, total remit amount. A little bit about the claim reference numbers. A claim reference number or CRN is assigned to all claims when they are initially submitted to access. The first five digits indicate the Julian date of receipt as follows. For example, this claim reference number is 200-2867890000. Digits one through two reflect the year the claim was received by access, 2020. Digits three through five indicates the date the claim was received by access. So we have 028, which is January the 28th. Digits six through 10 will indicate how the claim was submitted by paper, EDI, or even a Medicare crossover claim. In the sixth field of the CRN number, if the number is a six, that will identify it was an EDI submission. If the number is eight, that would identify that it was a Medicare crossover claim. Now on the address page of the remittance advice, this will display the billing provider's name, ID, and pay to mailing address, as well as the invoice date and payment date. The financial summary page will report payment and invoice data. If all claims are in process or denied, the page will indicate no active invoices. On the financial summary page, it would also include the pay for category, 
for acute or long-term care services, or even kids care. A check number, invoice date, type, and gross payment amount. Now let's talk a little bit about the invoice numbers. The invoice number, check number, and payment date appears on each page of the remittance notice. Invoice numbers are linked to the payment reference number or check number, EFT. The sixth through 11th digit of the invoice number, in this example, 678901, represents the access six-digit provider number. The last two digits of the invoice number, 01, represents the pay-to location for the provider. The invoice numbers will link your payments to the services that generated the payment. Invoice numbers that begin, for example, with the letter A, represent acute care services, and this would be for practitioners. Invoice numbers that begin with the letter L will represent all tech services, and B, behavioral health services. Now let's go over the remittance advice reports. The reports are broken down into categories, approved, denials, void, adjustments, secondary payer claims, and Medicare crossovers. Informational codes. For claim adjustment group codes, this will consist of two alpha characters that assign the responsibility of a claim adjustment on the explanation of benefits. For example, CO for contractual obligations, OA for other adjustments, Adjustment reason code CARC provides a reason for a payment adjustment that describes why a claim or service line was paid differently than it was billed. Remittance device remark codes, RARC, are used to provide additional explanation for an adjustment already described by a claim adjustment reason code or to convey information about remittance processing. Now let's go over reviewing the remittance advice. Paid claims. To review this section to determine which claims have been paid and if those claims were paid correctly. Any errors, such as claims that have not paid the correct number of units, should be resubmitted within time following guidelines, noting the original claim reference number or CRN. Adjusted claims. This section will report any claims submitted by the provider as adjustments due to payment or billing error. If problems still exist with a claim, it may be submitted again, of course, within the timely filing guidelines. This section also will report any claims that were adjusted by access as a result of an audit or review. Denied claims. Review each denial reason and determine the action necessary to correct the claim. Voided claims. This section will report any claims submitted by the provider as a voided transaction. There are many reasons a claim may be voided. These may be claims that have been paid by other insurance and need to be voided so that access can recoup its payment. This section also will report any claims that were voided by access as a result of an audit or medical review recoup. This is an example of a remittance device for paid claims. The information on each report will be very similar. You will be able to view the access Medicaid ID number, the recipient name, your patient control number, claim reference number or CRN, the status date, the procedure codes billed, including modifiers, dates of service, build amount, build units, allowed amount, and the allowed amount payment. At the bottom of each report, you will see the total number of claims that have been approved in this example and a paid status, total build amount of those claims, in addition to the total remit amount. For denied claims, again, the information will be similar. The billing provider, MPI number, name of the provider, again to include the invoice number, check number, and payment date. The recipient ID will be present in addition to the recipient's name, your patient account number, claim reference number, 
CPT or HCPCS code submitted for processing, dates of service, build amount, and units. For claims that are denied, we will always present with the denial reason code. In this example, we have L0, which will indicate we will provide you with the health plan ID number in addition to the name of the health plan. In this example, Stewart Health Choice of Arizona. Total number of claims that were submitted that are in a denied status and the total build amount. Now, some of the common claim denials that we receive are member not eligible, coverage terminated, non-covered charges, provider not enrolled, and correct member ID, untimely filing, coding errors, not medically necessary, missing claim information, additional medical documentation is required, prior authorization required, duplicate claim on file, previously paid claim, service not covered for contract type, primary payer explanation of benefits is required, and services do not match the primary payer's explanation of benefits. Now we move into the void report. Again, the same information would be present, your billing and service provider ID, tax ID number. You see in this example, the forms also indicated, CMS 1500 claim form. Over to the right, you will see the invoice number, check number and payment date. Again, the recipient Medicaid ID number will be present, first and last name, your patient account number, claim reference number, score date, service that was billed. In this example, we have 00400 and the applicable modifier AA. The dates of service, billed amount and units, allowed units, and over to the right next to previously paid, because this is a void or a recoupment, you will see the dollar amount with the negative sign next to it, indicating that that was the amount recouped. You will also be presented with a reason code. In this example, we have MD034 and the comments, denied adjustment of previous payment. As with the other reports, you will always see a summary of the total number of claims for that particular report slot, total billed amount, and total recouped amount. With the Medicare crossover claims, this is another separate report. On this report, again, same information, member ID, account number, claim reference number, procedure codes billed, billed amount, units, allowed amount, and your payment amounts will pre present. In addition, you will see the abbreviation MCC for Medicare crossover claim. Now the provider payment summary page. This is, will be a combination of all of the services that were submitted on the remittance device. At the top, you will see your provider name, NPI number, check date, check EFT number, total number of claims in the remittance file, total build amount, any adjustments, the total allowed amount after the adjustment, total paid to provider, total interest amount if that was applicable, and total check or EFT amount. Now with the remittance advice processing notes page, for every denial reason that's presented on your remittance advice, that information will present on the remittance advice processing notes page. You will see the denial reason code and be presented with a description of that denial reason. For example, L050.1 indicates recipient enrolled in plan for entire service date span. MD034 would identify emergency criteria not met and L099.1, recipient not eligible or enrolled for entire date of service and valid eligibility. Now let's move on to statusing that same exact information using the Access Online Claim Status Review Portal. So you will have the claim header. The claim number is a 12 character number used to uniquely identify a claim in the Access Claims Processing System. 
It consists of one, a five character Julian date, that is the date the claim was received, two, a one character indicator of the medium by which the claim was received, three, a one character type indicator for the source of claims received on tape, and four, a five character sequence number. The status date will be the effective date of the claims adjudication. The patient account number is the unique number submitted by the provider to identify the recipient's claim. Next, we have the service provider ID, which may be the six digit provider number or the national provider index number. And of course, the form type. How was the claim submitted to access? CMS 1500, UBO4, pharmacy claim or dental claim. On the price accounting summary, you will be able to view the line number, the claim status, the begin and end service dates, the service code, which are the CPT and HICDEX code submitted, the billed amount for each line of service, and the payment amount. For accounting details, the sequence number identifies a specific payment or discount that is applied to the claims line item. Sequence number 01 will indicate the original payment or discount that occurred. Any additional lines indicate adjustments that may have been applied. So you will be able to view the payment status, the type, and the amount. This is a view of one of the access online uh, claim submissions. Here you will be able to do view accounting details, edit history, status history, and denial reasons. Your service provider information will always be presented as will the recipient ID. This is considered the header information. Just below that, you will be able to view the claim reference number, the claim status, status date, and the recipient ID and your service provider ID number. Under the price accounting summary, you will be able to view each line of service submitted on that individual claim, and you will also be able to view the claim status for each individual line of service. In this example, lines one and two approved for payment. Line three, however, denied. Over to the right, under service code, you will be able to view each CPT or HICPIC code submitted, the build amount for each line of service, and the payment amount. And again, for line number three, that is in a denied status, the payment amount is listed as zero. For line number three, which is in a denied status, you will be able to see each individual line again with the dates of service, the service code build, and the build amount. For the lines that are approved for payment, if you're just looking at the information for line number two, you see that that line is also in an approved status. You see the different dates of services, September 4th of 2019, your service code, build amount, but a little different, you will see the allowed amount and the payment amount because this particular line did approve for payment. Now let's go over the edit history. On this tab, you will be able to view the score number which is a sequential number used to identify a specific edit result that occurred against the claim header or one of its detail lines. The line number is a sequential number used to identify a specific service, for example, doctor's visit or x-rays that are related to the claim. The date indicates the day the edit was performed and the edit failures list the reason codes why a claim failed in edit. All claims are extensively edited by the Access Claims Processing System. A scorecard is created each time a claim is edited in the Access Processing System. The scorecard summarizes which edits were passed or successful and those that failed, which caused an action to be performed, and will also indicate the claim actions and status. For example, edit code H001.1 would identify service provider ID field is missing. Providers may view the status of each claim using the Access Online Provider Portal, regardless of if you submitted that claim electronically using your clearinghouse, using the Access Web Portal, or paper submission. 
On the History tab, the Edit History tab, you will be able to view the Access Claim Reference Number, which again is a 12-digit number unique to each individual claim. The score number will indicate each time a process was initiated on that claim. The clean claim date shows the last date action was taken on your claim. And last, adjudication status, which shows the status of the claim either in a paid status, mixed status, void, or denied status. Now for the status history, the sequence number is used to identify a specific adjudication status at a given point in time. The clean claim date indicates the date all requested information was provided to access. The adjudication status indicates the result. Again, approved, denied, not adjudicated. And that would be the status of the editing process. The status date indicates the date the claim header or claim line was adjudicated. Mixed status are claims with multiple lines of service that result in either a paid or denied line. This is what we consider mixed status. And that information will present on the same claim reference number. In this example, we have a status history and the claim is in a mixed pay status. We're looking at score number one and you see it has outlined the clean claim date. In this example, line number one presents with the denial code L112.1, and the description reads, modifier number one, not valid for procedure. So there is the hint to look at your claim submission for line number one and view the modifier that was indicated on the claim and compare that with the CPT or HICPIC code that was also included. As you see here in the final reason, it states invalid combination of codes, which would indicate the CPT code and the modifier at the time of processing did not match. Now let's move on to the duplicate report request. For paper remittance devices or notices, these are not available for viewing on the Access Web Portal. If a provider requires a copy of that paper remittance device, you will have to contact the finance department to request a paper copy. The finance department will impose a fee of $4 per page to reproduce the remittance device. For electronic remittance devices or notices, the 835, these are sent out to the provider per an electronic file at the end of each financial cycle. The 835 remains on the 835 server for 90 days from the payment date to allow you time to download the remit to your desktop and to be able to forward that information to other team members. At the time of the 90-day period, the 835 EDI file is removed from the server. The finance department will impose a fee of $25 to reload the file again for access. So that will conclude our presentation today. If you have any questions, please forward your questions to provider training and the email address is providertrainingffs at azaccess.gov. Thank you.